Hello everyone, welcome to our daily physics problem, day number 38. Today we have a very interesting problem. Uh, like you play on a desk, where you very quickly slide up the tablecloth and you keep the plate on the table. Stationary, that's very interesting. S sometimes we have fun with it when we work out. So a thin plank is sitting on a L lens horizontal table with one side of it at one of the edge of the table. A bottle of mass M is on the plank and its distance from one of the edges of the table is L. If you consider a constant horizontal rider force on the plank and maintain the bottle balanced, what is the minimum force F required that the bottle won't fall from the table? Coefficient of friction on all the surfaces is mu. So I want you to pause the video on your own to try to come back to the video and show you how I did it. So welcome back guys. First let's lay out all the forces here. We have two gravitational force, mg and big mg. Then we have a normal force that have friction on it. The friction uh, exerted on the plank is F1. And the friction exerted on the small m, uh, the, the bottle, is F, pointing to the right word because the plank is sliding to the right. So according to the bottle, the bottle is sliding to the left, so the friction force is on the right. Then that rightward force also provide a counter force, uh, Newton's second law pair to the force of the big F on the right. So there are two friction forces acting on the plank, and one friction force acting on the bottle, and we have two normal forces. That's just a fact. So what we only do is to find the acceleration and use kinematic formula to find out that the bottle will reach the edge of the table at the same time as the plank move to the edge of the table so that we find a limiting condition of the bottle won't fall off the table. So based on Newton's law we know that F minus the two friction force equal to the acceleration times the mass of the plank. Then we know the friction force F2 will provide the acceleration for the, ma for the mass uh, the bottle. Then we know the friction force of the bottle is equal to mg mu. And the friction force that the plank feels will be its mass, big mass, plus m, small bottle, because small bottle also exerts normal force on it, times g times mu. So now we have a system equation that we can solve. Now we can try to find the kinematic relationship. You know, kinematic formula, one half m1 t squared is the motion of the plank after t second it can travel through L distance. And one half A2 T squared, the uh, mo motion formula for the bottle, travel L minus small l distance, so it won't fall out the table. Go a little bit further, it will fall out the table. So now we can solve for M1, F, uh, A1, A2, and try to plug in the formula to find out the limiting condition. So what is A1 and A2? So from the uh, second uh, formula, third formula, we can equate them because they're both equal to F2. We can solve for A2 equal to G mu. Then we want to solve for A1 from the first formula, and then we plug in the friction force so for uh, friction force for the plank and the bottle, F1 and F2. We know MA1 equal to F minus MG mu, minus MG mu, minus MG mu. <laughs> So we can simplify it into A1 equal to F minus 2 mg mu minus big mg mu divided by big M. So now we know A2 and A1 separately. Now we can plug into the kinematic formula. But first we can simplify the kinematic formula because we need to find the time it takes for it to reach. So we can equate both, equate them. The first formula minus L will be equal to the second formula. We equate them and it's solve for t. So L will be equal to one half t squared times a1 minus a2. Right. Then we can solve for t. t will be equal to uh, 2 L divided by a1 minus a2 and then square root uh, all of the all of them. Then after we know t, we can plug into the first formula uh, to try to find try to find the relationship uh, between A1 and L. Because A1, we have our force in it, and we want to find the minimum force 
so it's a good way we can plug in a1 so one half a1 times t squared will be equal to l and t squared we already know is equal to 2l divided by a1 minus a2 both of them the square root and then square it and so you got equal to l and it becomes square root and then square just original expression so we can uh, ignore them then we plug in a1 it's a lot of things to plug in so a, a1 would equal to this expression we have one half times a1 times 2l divide by a1 minus a2 a1 is this oh gosh too big a2 is just if you remember it's g mu and that would be equal to l the big l big letter l not small letter l then kind of messy expression if we simplify a little bit cancel out the two and multiply both sides by m g minus 2 mu t g mu minus m g mu divided by m minus g mu multiply both sides by this expression we get this expression on the left hand side we just multiply the denominator both sides we will do l times m and n cancel so we have f minus 2 m g mu minus m g mu minus this one didn't cancel so we multiply m g mu so now we divide both sides by l and then simplify it a little bit we have l divided by l times f minus 2 g mu minus 2 big m g mu and then on the left hand side we have f minus 2 m g mu minus m g mu then we minus both sides by l over l f and then plus both sides by 2 m g mu and m g mu so we have 2 m g mu plus m g mu minus l over l times 2 m g mu minus 2 times l over l oops uh, it's fine <laughs> m g mu <laughs> so now we know that l minus l divided by l times f will be equal to this expression here but we can simplify a little bit we know the uh, uh, instead of factoring out the 2 mg mu we have 2 mg mu times 2 minus l over l plus mg mu times l over 2 l over l uh, this one should be a 1 I made a mistake this one should be a 1 so now let's bo divide both sides by l minus l di divide by l we have f finally we have our f the minimum force required Mm. Uh, this one should be a small L, not a big one. Don't mistake here. So F we go to 2 mg mu times L divided by L minus L. Because we divide by L minus L divided by L. So we multiply by L divided by L minus L. So the minus L over L minus L plus mg mu times L divided by L minus L minus, oops, let's move left a little bit minus 2 times L over L minus L so now let's simplify a little further more the first uh, clause in here we cancel out because L over L divided by L over L is 1 so we have L equal to 2 mg mu plus mg mu we simplify this one maybe L over L L minus L 2 L divided by L over L and we want to make the expression look better we can uh, factor out 2 mg mu then the first version will be m divided by m and the second will be plus l minus 2 l divided by 2 times l minus l and that's our final solution it's a long way though thank you for today